Captain Lee, if you haven't heard, he left for a new chief's position in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Uh, he, uh, he retired, and from here he uh, moved on down to Rhode Island. So what we got to do is a way we're going to get rid of him. No, no. He, uh, actually, I, I, he was the best guy we had. He actually, well, after the, very I think patient. it was after the last meeting on the I Thursday. I think so. <laughs> That's great. Friday he got the call that he got the uh, position out of 84 applicants. He was picked. Oh, wow. It's a uh, 33 man police department. Excuse me, can somebody close that door because I, it's, it, it, it's, yeah, thank you so much. 33 um, officer uh, police department with five uh, men, uh, administrator of uh, staff. Yeah, so he's the staff. Yeah, he's the chief. Wow. Right. So, um, Sergeant Lima left this morning for Virginia. His uh, job is at James Madison. It was homecoming weekend. He's so coming know. back. He's coming back, I think, uh, by Monday. <laughs> is it a month? Monday. 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 Do we have new captain? Yeah, if new captain's coming from Area E5. His name is James Hassan. H A S O N. H A S S O N. He was here. Uh, probably about 10 years ago as a lieutenant. And then he made captain and moved out to uh, West Roxbury Station, E5. Right. We found out this morning that he's coming down here to A1. And when's he Saturday? Next Tuesday. He's a huh? He's what? Yeah. It all depends. <laughs> James. <laughs> The um, stats for the uh, past 30 days, uh, no homicides, no sexual assaults, no, one robbery, we'll talk about it, no aggravated assaults, there was one B&E, we'll talk about that, there was no auto theft, uh, 13 larcenies, uh, from actually up from up seven from last year from six. Uh, three lastings from the motor vehicle, one vandalism through by graffiti, uh, no community disorders. There was 12 cars towed, uh, motor vehicle violation 67, and parking citation tickets 303. Uh, the um, lobby was down at the um, down at the corner of the commercial. We broke a convenience store, and an individual came in, brandishing a knife, threatening the clerk. The 7-Eleven was down at the corner. The guy ended up jumping over the counter and stealing um, five and ten dollar bills back over the counter and left. Um, and um, the detectives were reviewing the surveillance cameras. So I think they have a pretty good lead on, on the uh, individual, on uh, white male. Uh, the, um, the, the B&E right, was um, on the eighth of September. It was the 27 Charter, and the um, individual was arrested. He, uh, we had a, what a neighbor watch the whole thing. He actually comes to the meetings. He called 911, kept his eye on him, did a great job. The, 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 the witness, the witness, the, he um, did a great job, and the officers ended up getting him on Unity Street. Right, they got the, um, he is basically, he says he's homeless, 39 year old white male. Right, and some of the uh, neighborhood people see the, said they've seen him around quite a bit. And he um, got cell phones from, two cell phones, stole tools. He um, was trying to steal bikes also. Right, so he could be one of our. Um, we talked about it last week in the meeting, mm -hmm. the cut the locks. Yeah. Right? This guy had both cutters on him also. Oh. All right, so hopefully um, 
And we can get him for that too. But he's, the detectives knew of him, and he's been a fast problem over the years. Um, so he's, uh, he's actually being held right now. The, um, the last of these, there was 13, and basically some of the same things. First one was on Atlantic and Cross on the 7th of September. Between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m., a gentleman from California erected a statue there. All right, I made out of um, steel and fiberglass, and someone overnight stole it. It's worth five thousand dollars. It was. What uh, I mean, what they stole it. The oh, statue. Yeah. You just you just erected it that day, and overnight somebody stole it. Where was it? Thomas Park. It wasn't a statue, it was that heart thing. Yeah, he, it's, it's a, a heart thing. Yeah. A red heart. The heart. Oh, that was a red heart. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, in my neighborhood, everything, street signs, everything's gone. You know, you see them riding around with the pickup trucks? They load them, they're taking everything. Right? And they bring it over to uh, Everett and Chelsea to the yard and sell it. They took full of Buddha, beautiful Yeah. And the um, next last thing was the boot from the fire department. Uh, they stole it. It was found in the uh, Prado, in the... Um, Fountain, right? <laughs> Still, um, I don't think they have any leads on it. As far as they never determined how much was in it because uh, they didn't really check it. Yeah, we need them. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of money though because they said they had to do something. Clean it up. Yeah. yeah. It says on the night September 12th between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. That's when it was stolen. The uh, next one was at uh, Hanover Street on September 7th, uh, 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 a.m. Someone uh, got into the Office of uh, Education Reform now, installed two laptops, uh, an iPad, and a uh, computer keyboard. Where's that tell you? Uh, 256 Hanover? I never noticed it. It must be up above us. Cafe Victoria is down by CBS? Yeah, the Cafe Victoria. No, Cafe Victoria is 292 on the first one. Yeah, there was no sign. Everything was locked up. There was no sign of anybody. So they're uh, looking into you know, going from there on that one. They broke in. That's what was taken. Uh, the next last thing was on the 15th of September, the, the 12.25 p.m. All right, this was um, at the, uh, well, at the uh, uh, Bill and Ian. Waitress left her phone on the waitress um, desk. Somebody come by and grab it. Uh, exactly. Yeah, the guy who got it. Yeah, he was in the uh, men's room. He was in the men's room. Yeah, in the uh, cleanest room. Yeah. Oh, the dog in the yeah. The um, next one was on September 15, also 5.40 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in Hanover, Richmond. The uh, female locked her bike to the, truck bike to the bike stand and somebody cut the cable. Right? Uh, $600 truck bike. The next one was, um, lastly, was 4.63 Hanover on September 19th. And the, um, Vic Ripley, she, Actually, the next roommate, uh, it's laptop, Nintendo electronic equipment, a signed uh, Ted Williams baseball, um, aviated sunglasses belonging to a grandfather from World War II, and a second, another, and a second blue laptop. All right, no sign of forced entry. Right. That was on Hanover Street. The other last day was on the 17th of September. At 2 p.m. on Atlantic Ave, and this poor uh, tourist was sitting on a bench. Somebody sat down next to her, and the next thing they took, she, they walked off with her pocketbook, with everything in it. 
keys to their Porsche, uh, Robert Bankers, Apple, iPod, uh, basically everything she had. She was sitting at the bench down there by uh, the pilot house. They steal a cat. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> and it's, we had no auto clips. Okay. Uh, next one is on the 21st of September, 12 p.m. And on Hanover Street, and this was the, uh, oh, the woman was getting her nails done in the nail salon, and she was uh, paying, and she left her designer glasses on the counter and walked out, and the woman paying behind them took the sunglasses. So they tried to get them back from the other one right there. And the other one, this one's down at the Mirabella Pool on the 21st, uh, Commercial Street, 5.05 p.m. The kid left his um, sweatshirt on a hook and somebody came and so, took it and it had um, his iPhone, mm -hmm. all his IDs, and, um, and his um, school, some of his school stuff, his, he's a student, some of his school, school stuff was in his pockets of the uh, party. I don't know. He wasn't playing basketball. Yeah, he was. Um, he might have been playing basketball. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. He was outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was a young kid. He might have been running or something. I don't know what he was doing. But. The other one's on the uh, 24th of September on Chief Street. Somebody cut the lock for, to her truck bike and uh, stole it. On the uh, between 12 noon and 2:30 p.m. on Chief Street, and the other next one was uh, on Palmetto Street at the library. The uh, tourist from New Hampshire, that her young son was using the men's room. He left his uh, iPhone on the sink, and he ran back in, and the guy went in after him, had the iPhone in his hand coming out, and when the other phone ran off, took the kid, took the, took the kids. Uh, uh, iPhone, the last track that he used to trace system was that last time it was before shut off was he was on the Boston Common. And that was on the 24th of September. Oh. <laughs> and the, um, well, this one here was the last day on the 27th of the month, 109 a.m. at a, in a restaurant here on Hanover Street. The woman put her uh, handbag on the back of the chair went off to mingle with friends and came back and the bag was gone. Yeah, well, you know, no, 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 Community disorder. I mean, September 28th. Community disorder is a hate crime. Oh, it's a hate crime. Yeah, that's so what's a crime when I call the police? I need help. I have disorderly people in my building, and I got two people, three people, want to beat me up and throw them food at yeah. my door. So they police came in 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And I was in Scotland. Yeah. Is that that's about community disorder? No. Community disorder is a hate crime. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought yeah. it was yeah. community yeah. disorder. What was the date on that again? September 20th, it was Saturday. Next time I get my bad friend, I'm going to take it. That's right, get the bad friend. I took the money from him. Did they take that information from you? Oh, I gave the police on it. He didn't write down anywhere, but I gave it to him. L88 LTD LC6. It's a black man. My, you know, they jumped in there. They didn't really hit me. They want to hit me when I was getting close. To they, were there, they were there. They were your tenants' party, you said? No, my tenants, this is the second time this week I had a problem with them last week. On uh, Wednesday, there was 45 people. I didn't call the cops. I just told everybody up. in an apartment, three people, three rooms. Like, this is a violation of, you know, help. What do you call it? Tender violation. Two people. On Saturday again, one o'clock. This is from one o'clock till three thirty in the morning. I was inside protecting my property until three, four, four in the morning. Even after the police came. Twenty-seven. Yeah, I was afraid the police came to come back. But I'm drunk. 
And then I noticed my door open and they're making noise in my building and then other people were trying to get in and didn't even know these people. So I told the two kids they couldn't come in and told the girl she was about her, you know who she was. She was yelling at me, but where she was sleeping. I said, you're fine with the home telephone. I don't know. My girlfriend pays rent. Yeah, your girlfriend pays rent? Not you. Your body. She put her foot in the door. And I didn't want to get up. Because I don't want to be insulted. I don't have an assault charge on me. I said, if you don't get your foot out of my door, I said, you know what's going to happen to you? And then two kids were threatening me. There's food in my, my window. And I'm going to beat you up, lady. And, blah, blah, blah. and they walked down the street after they threw food. And I started walking towards them. I said, come on. You know, you know I'm bad like that. And I got the license plate number, and he jumped in the, in the door and he took off. But I got up to the back of the, the license plate. He probably didn't back up and hit me, but I wasn't thinking. But I got the license plate number, and I took off. And then the cops came like 20 minutes later, and I just stood outside my door until like 4 to 4 to 1, and they checked my door. <coughs> yeah, I called, yeah, I called her until she had to go. That's what she said. She tried to say I lied about everything. She was drunk. She didn't know me. I love you, Kia. You don't even know me. You made a mud. I love you. <laughs> she tapped me out the door and like this third foot. And you're going to fall. I'm already going to fall out the window. You know what I mean? Still bitch. Oh, she's she's still bitch. Still you know what I mean? Oh, they're going to sue me. They're going to sue me. Yeah. Sue the building and they're going to want a million dollars. Oh, I'm like, shit. Give me that. Yeah, well, that's the. That's We're the yeah, no, if you give a lease for three years, you just go to the No lease. 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 That's the only landlord's protection. No lease. What time did you tell I called um, at 2.10. I'm trying to get, if it's the 28th, 27th, or 28th. Well, it was 28th. It was at 2.10 in the morning. Oh, all right. And I don't know. What would that be under? Like, the party came in under a lot of party call, I'm guessing. What did you say when you called? I said, I have tenants that are loud. I got two kids that want to physically hit me, you know. And I'm, I said, I'm stuck in between doors right now, I says. Um, they're throwing food. And, you know, I'm like, and they yelling at me. I got two girls behind me. Five people. And I'm stuck in the middle. In the middle. So, and two in the back and three in front. I I told them I told them to open the door because they were in my building. I said, "You should shut up." They're not going to open the door. So three in front. I'm trying to deal with three in front of me on the, the glass. So, glass. Hey. Yeah, right this second. It's only been four days. She's walking very slowly up the stairs. It's very quiet. Put shoes off and she shifts. Did you, did you go to court to, to have her evicted? No, um, I didn't have to talk to Ralph. He just called over and told her to leave. Um, she, did she have a lease with you? Or? It's a monthly lease. Yeah. I don't think she remembers what happened. That's the best part. She told me I lied. She didn't remember what happened. She's like, I don't know. I don't remember that anything. Why? Why do you tell me? Why do you tell me? A whole week. A whole week you've been drunk. How old is she? She must be like late twenties. Late. She's not. A, she's not. A, she's not a student. She said. Because I asked her when she moved in, are you a student? She said no. I asked her again, what's that? You were a student. They were all older people, like late twenties. Who they rent to? I was just amazed. Forty-five people that went there. I should have called the cops that night, but I just took care of myself. Yes. Next time I'm gonna call the cops. Another incident that happened. Oh, surprise! It's not on. The list here. The man that lives in 185 Hilton is the elderly person, and he took a fall. He broke both his arms and gashed his face. <coughs> he goes, they had to take him out to the hospital to the nursing home, which is on High Street also. While he's in the nursing home, somebody breaks in his apartment, takes a television, I don't know exactly some kind of other stuff from his apartment. They also take the keys to his car and off his car. <gasps> did he fall in his car? Yes, it was reported. But did he fall in and they stole his car? No, 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 no. no. While well, he was in the nursing home, they went in his car and they knew he yeah. was in the nursing home. Oh, okay. The so apartment was empty. Oh. How come he's in the car written down? I don't understand. Last week when I kept on saying something broke every time. You know the date on it? No, I'm sorry, I don't. I, I don't. Was it recent? It was within the past month. 
Naracho, but you can call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard about from three different people in the same building. Try 175 volt. 185. 185. I'll tell you, if I'm not mistaken, unless the crime, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, unless the crimes fall into any of these categories, when you guys come to the meetings, you're not necessarily going to have yeah, going going any yeah. other crimes that don't fit into this category. Right, so I'll have to tell how to yeah, label them. Right. Well, that would be a breaking of interest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. And uh, Rich from Suffolk handled the problem because the police obviously did not. And the person who reported the problem really does not want to get into it, unfortunately. And I do not want to dis uh, disrespect her uh, opinion or oh, yeah. whatever she wants. But the bottom line is, Rich called everybody, which was a college student, out of the apartment and threatened them and said, if there is another situation here, everybody will be expelled. And I have to give Rich credit because the bottom line is he showed up the fall. This was a Thursday night when this madness took place. And on the Friday night, Rich showed up at 11 o'clock to make sure there wasn't a repeat of Thursday night, which was a little rewarding to hear because the police, who was standing at the corner of Bovis, I don't know where he was, but the other cop is singing at La Vida Mia, Whatever, whatever he's saying there, I mean, at making his career, and uh, I, I, I don't understand what's going on in the neighborhood because this should never be happening. But Rich, Rich is in the car with the police. Oh, he yeah. came down. Yeah, yeah that's you know what? He was more effective. Okay. No disrespect. I'm just he wasn't no alone. No disrespect to you, but he wasn't when alone. you hear you're gonna lose thousands of dollars oh, in. In uh, 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 you're gonna lose thousands of dollars in your uh, college tuition. I guess that shakes you up a little. And when they all come out, he made sure he did a follow up on the Friday night. Yeah, he's on Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. And they did not do anything, as far as I know, on the Friday night to disrupt. The neighborhood on Salem Street. Could you close that door behind you, please? What's Rich's number? What do you call? Is that the body line? No, 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 no. Rich has his own line. This is a Suffolk University line. And Rich came down and said, he did the right thing. You know his number? I know. Off the top of my head, I'd be lying to you. We should know it as a police officer. Gina, I think I have a, I had a question. If there's just a loud party and um, Rich is right, I don't know, but she may have been Rich, and he's riding with the other Boston, Boston police, yes. some police, can he respond to that loud party not That's knowing if they're 20 somethings or if they're students? Yeah, he doesn't what? know until they get there. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, but. And then they break it up, and if it's okay. Suffolk, you deal with Suffolk. Okay, and if it's yeah. not, then the Boston yeah. cop right. accepts yeah. it. Most of it's been young professional, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 This was professional war on. What's the call? I think it's one second. I think it's one second. Yeah, it's a long call. Yes, it's one second. Yes, it's one Yes, 7503. Thank you. The, um, no. There was um, five arrests for the last 30 days. One was um, an individual was broke into the garage, the car in the garage at Hull, in Snow Hill there, the uh, big one there, Commercial Street. And he was apprehended. Uh, he, um, He's actually from Lowell, and he's been around here for a while. He got
got quite a bit of problem from the car, from a tourist that were out there. And he was, he was arrested after a foot chase all the way to Haymarket. Um, How old? He is 39 years old. Oh, right. The next arrest was uh, drugs possession class B with intent to distribute. That was on the 8th, at 155 a.m. on Commercial Street. A suspect out of Blakefield, Mass., was arrested uh, with, uh, co with cocaine. Where was he from? Linfield? Linfield, Linfield Mass. 35 year old male from Linfield, Mass. Is he in the Yes. Uh, the next one was an arrest on the 9th for um, assault and battery on police officer and trespassing on Prince Street. They got called for an individual in the lobby sleeping and wouldn't leave. And uh, they went in and he um, became disruptive. And he ended up getting a fight with the police officers. And they had a base on and he was um, fought again out front on Prince Street once they got him out of the building. And so he was charged with assault and battery and for trespassing him. And that was on Prince Street. Uh, right here, 61. Yeah. And the other one was the arrest for the B&E I mentioned earlier for uh, the Charter Street incident. And, um, he basically labels himself as, as homeless. And he's a, a white male, 39 years old. The other arrest was um, on, um, for drugs possession of Class A. That was um, on uh, Endicott Street on the 16th of the month, 4.20 p.m. The drug unit got an individual there for uh, heroin. He is a 21 year old male. What number are in the car? 113. You know where he's from? Not then. Is he, uh, this is he didn't you know, wash for quite a while. And they end up hearing on that day. What, what was the arrest of the class B for? That was uh, a <laughs> uh, 266 commercial. So. Okay, that guy in the chart was also caught with um, dope. Yeah, he had um, pills in his pocket. Yeah, he had the marijuana. He had pills in his pocket when they patted <coughs> him down during the arrest. The homeless guy? Yeah. So, uh, oh, the vandalism by graffiti was uh, on the 18th of September on Prince Street. <coughs> the victim reports someone spray painted. Um, spelled NBD over VW, whatever that means, those signals on her in front of her building on uh, Front Street. One, between 1.30 in the afternoon and 8.30 a.m. 8.30. NBD? Yeah, NBD. Yeah. NBD, Nora Bro Bravo Delta, over VW, whatever. Ten percent over three. We're going to start with the large scheme for vehicles and then we got a little side. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, second one was yeah, 357 commercial on the 10th of September between 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the woman's. Um, she had a Honda scooter and someone popped the seat and stole the battery. It was a Honda scooter. Oh, I have a question on those Honda scooters. Uh, they can park on the sidewalk, right? It's, they're trying to change it now. Good. Get them off. They should, if they get them off the sidewalk, shouldn't they get a license plate and put them in the street? Yeah, they just, all they need is a registration okay. sticker. So, but they have the right to park on the sidewalk. Yeah, there's nothing stopping them right now. My tenant next door keeps on calling the cops on the, and the tenant has one. I don't they're mind trying to, They've been, I don't they've mind been trying to change the rule. I don't know what's taking so long. Well, the problem is, well, the problem is, is you can't handicap access because it takes up so much space. And right. they well, That's when they'll take it. That's when they'll take it. Right. They're just up on the sidewalk. Right. People no, see, if, if it's placed on the sidewalk, 
can't access it. Then oh, yeah, have, that way. That that's way. the way the church oh, has to knock. Knock, 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 Kid that was actually that came down from Church Street. He put his phone underneath the seat on the motorcycle, and they came over and popped the seat and took his phone and iPhone. Somebody must have been watching him, I guess. Yeah. 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 Noise Place, September 29th. You want me to go to the first one? Noise Place. Yeah, there's one more. And there's one more. Is it three? Yes, that's it. Said. Uh, you already mentioned to the Street, 52nd commercial, and... Uh, I mentioned House Street, they made the arrest. Well, House Street, yeah, uh, the garage. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're we're in the county. Yeah. Okay. Right. And that's basically it. Teddy, Teddy, is it the garage? Do you know? That didn't do that, just a sec. We'll send you the garage. I called down there. We had had problems before. There were kids that had come in. Those go, the, all the doors are locked and you need a card to get in. I mean, I, I arrived here. But what some of the kids are doing on the top, on the top level, they jump over the fence. And those cars are outside and... But you can get in if you go to Commercial Street, right on that ground yeah, level, when I'm upstairs, like you don't need your card. Oh, on the Prince That's Street side? Yeah. yeah. If you go down the Prince Street, right, yeah. right there, don't have that block to you to access no. with your car. No, that's why it's all. You can go in right up and right up the... No, if you come around by the yeah. They don't seem to really... Yeah. Well, I do much. They don't have a camera. They don't? No, they don't. They don't? Clinton Street cleaned up a bit, but we had it down like 10 times. They do have somebody walking around, but, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that if the person's on the right floor at the right time, that's anybody's, you know. And the front's always open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The front's always open. Yep. I never seen that closed. You mean downstairs? Yeah. yeah. No, he's gone. Oh, commercial street. Anybody, anybody can walk in there. Yeah. yeah. He walks off. No, he's there, but he's sleeping. He's supposed to be in the house. <laughs> yeah, because I cracked on the first floor. He's sleeping. <laughs> I have to bang on the window sometimes. Uh, 136 Prince Street. Yeah. 14th of September. He's had it come twice for one hour. Yeah, for the, that rear, rear the one we had before. And then the following week, which was the 21st, they had to come again twice. So I don't know what's going on. I saw on. the report on you know, that. Yeah, the report on it. And, uh, I was going to take a landlord? It's a condo, Marie. Yeah, it's and it's started. a management company. Right. And the woman doesn't want to know nothing that manages that. And look, that's the place where the highest town you can get into. Right. Yeah. And I want Half is property. Yes, yes, because it's basically yeah, on margins. Yes, yeah. the windows are on our margin. Yeah. Right. It's 136. It's like Fort Knox trying to get in there. But that's supposedly been spoken to the management, so we'll see what happens. Okay, we'll so now we have, now we got the Red Sox tomorrow night, playoffs. The Bruins start tonight. The Patriots. So here we go. It's private. I got your work Right. Is there a maximum so amount that can be in one apartment or yeah. one apartment? Is there a law to a maximum amount of people at, in one apartment? Shh. You mean living here? No, busy. Fire code. Fire code. Yeah. Well, why can't they go by that? Because usually it's about do. 40 over. They do. That's why we play them. Get them out. Shame of all things. Why do you come out of the window? They were standing there like... Penguin. In the bathroom. I couldn't really do it. The girl would have said, What? I looked at my I can't believe it. This is all he wants. One by one. Two more home. And she said, I was working. She moved in now two months ago. Get out, I said. Ten o'clock at night. Shut the music and get out. And she's crying. Oh, I'm drunk. She's drunk as I said. Oh, you gotta get out. You know how sad I had that walk past that they could stop. They could find it, basically. Oh, yeah. They get it. They find it. They've all been getting it. They find the landlord, right? Yeah, they in charge. The landlord in the town. Yeah, both of them. Both of them. How many times are calls made? It depends what happens. If there's like five there and they all leave, you know, it depends how quiet they are. They're moving at four. If it's a repeat house, yeah, they get it. Yeah. 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 Y
That's right. That's right. Did I get each of the individuals so right. of the party? Shalim, you're so right. No. 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 Just no. No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, but they don't hit them all. They raise revenue for the city. Yeah. 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 But they, they try to ID as many as they can. Yeah. Before they all start rushing. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? What else can you tell us about the new captain? Uh, well, you said he was here. He yeah, was stationed in the North End 10 years ago. Who is it? Good evening, everyone. My name is Martin Keogh, and uh, I hope you've met me before. Uh, I'm a candidate for Boston City Council at large. And in the election last week, I came in fifth out of 19 people, which is great. Um, I first of all want to thank all of you that voted for me. And those of you that don't know me, I'm going to ask you to please vote for me on November 5th. Um, my three big issues are public safety, uh, particularly, I've been here before, I've said the exact same thing. We need more police. We need police to be over the years with crime aside, such as downtown, Chinatown, and North End. And uh, we need cameras and community policing. Public schools, I want neighborhood schools. I want excellent schools in every neighborhood. I want sports in every school. Um, I know everybody says the same thing, every candidate you come talk to, but it, it's, I'm a product of the Boston Public Schools. I think there's only one other candidate in my race that even went to the public schools, so they don't understand how important it is to me. Um, again, I came in fifth last week. I want to thank you for all of you that voted for me. Uh, I didn't do too well in Ward 3, but I did pretty decent in the North End. Um, so I want to thank you for that. And I'm going to ask you again if you consider voting for me on November 5th, which is just four short weeks away. And I've got a brochure. In case you never got one, I'm going to get everybody one. But does anybody have any questions? Because if it's one thing I don't mind answering, it's a question. Nobody? No tough questions? No, we don't want the rules. Oh, man. Don't, it's no torture coming to the North End. I worked in the City Hall for 10 years, and I was down there all the time. Uh, I used to work with Peggy Davis Mullen. And um, if you don't remember who she is, she was on the City Council for 10 years. But uh, if she couldn't make a meeting in the North End, I was with the guy that came. So I, uh, I enjoyed it. If I get elected, you can guarantee I'll be down every day because they've got the best restaurants in the entire city. <laughs> So thank you. No questions? Any tough questions? All right, great. All right, so again, I want to thank everybody. We wanted in writing. Let's what? see if they all put it. Every candidate puts it in writing. Who's what in writing? What they promise to do. Everybody makes all these promises. They don't go through with them. Uh, I'm not too crazy about the bike lanes. There's some areas of the city where they're yeah, uh, unnecessary. Right. Um, 
Well, you get areas like Jamaica Plain where people love it. So, well, okay, that's what we're going to have. Yeah. I'm getting that in congested areas where, you know, there's nowhere to park. You know, where are you going to put the bike lanes? Um, you know, but this city is, they try to promote it as a walkable city and, uh, you know, with bikes and everything. But there's just some areas of the city where it won't work. It'd be nice if it could work here. The people I talk to around here, they don't want it. Like <laughs> I mean, I almost hit the guy. He came forward this way. I'm going this way, the right way. Yeah. He's coming my way. And, you know, it's I'm not even trying to see the way they are. Salem Street is not a bike lane, yeah. 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 only bikes. It's a shared lane. Yes. It's on the yes. left hand side. Not in the parking. It's on the left hand side. It's called a shared lane. Yeah, but you can't get a car down there. Well, just don't, don't confuse it with a lane that's restricted to No, no, but I'm just saying the guy just coming the wrong way. Should we feel like it's a one-way street? You should not be coming down that street. It's bicycle people need to go by the road. If they're going to ride the bike, the block is going to be a block. Well, I agree. I mean, some of the deaths that have happened probably have been, you know, I don't feel bad at that. There must have been 20 people on bikes that came up Salem Street. And some poor guy was trying to park his van. And those bikes decided that they should go on the sidewalk. The and they all the went on the here. sidewalk <coughs> so that the people could not walk on the sidewalk. That's when you, that's when you tip them all over and give them flat the the tires. The Excuse me? I have a copy of the review review there? Call on the desk. Those oh. are the same people I caught coming up on Street. Saturday morning? Same day. Saturday morning. Yeah. They go in front of the old not church, they get like deer in headlights, and then all of a sudden they go up and getting on the sidewalk. I say, hey, what do you think this is? The sidewalk is for pedestrians. But the head the sidewalk comes down to a one way can't see it. Sidewalk you can't battle with no laws and so many anything. You should make a lot of it. No law, it doesn't say they were vehicle, it doesn't say they have to be registered. It, 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 all it says it has to abide by the same traffic rules as on court. Well, oh, so they're not abiding by the rules. Yes. yes. Is it true that they're putting the whole bike racks in and all that? Is that true? I haven't heard that. And again, I mean, no, the yes. whole Brian will probably know better than I do. No, I don't think so. For the bike racks, or anything like that. I mean, yes. Yeah, right in the square over here. The ones they're going to fix up over here with Dom's restaurant is? They're, they're working out to put some bike racks in there. Now, what can we do with that? It's not so happy. There are communities that are outraged. There should absolutely be community input. And if the other guy is done, no matter what, these meetings, we go to them, but the decisions are all usually made. But, but you were here when they said that. And now, after the fact, you want to fight it? I'm not trying to. Now, we're going to fight it. We're full presentation. It's a little good bike rack, so people want to tie them on the poles. Oh, right. No, I'm talking about the rental part. Oh, we talked about the rental part. If I'm lucky enough to get elected, I would definitely have a hearing around in the North End. It wouldn't even be an issue or a problem for me. And, you know, one last thing I want to say is, I know you've seen me here before. I've been working really hard to, to earn a spot in the City Council, and I'm asking if you vote. And I, you know, like I said, you're going to see me every day. And I make a joke about coming to the restaurants. I am going to come, but I'm going to be, you'll see me all over the place. So. Okay. All right. So, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um, some I met I met many of you actually coming here to some of the meetings in North End and just being out on the streets and talking with some of you. Um, my name is Brian Gannon. I will say I am a cyclist. But wait, hold up. Yeah, I'm a cyclist, but I do follow the rules and I do believe in like bike bike lanes, but I think only in appropriate areas. I think the, the streets in North End are too narrow for uh, for bike lanes, but I think the Sharrows. They're called sharrows. They're just giant arrows on the street. And I think for some of the people that are riding in the wrong direction on the streets, to them it's another indicator, hey, you're going the wrong way. So, I mean, it's, it's not going to interfere with traffic or anything like that. It's just directional. But I love zipping around the city on my bike because it's just an easy way to get from one place to the other. I agree. I just don't want to see a lot of people up here.
cops sure. on their bikes and a lot of people getting it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's hard out there. It's I feel like almost out. every car is coming after you, like they're trying to get you. So. Um, a charge of a homicide or... It's dangerous. It is dangerous. I mean, I don't have anything against riding a bicycle either. It's, it's the fact that, you know, these streets are so congested. Oh, absolutely. And no, no, it's no, very I, difficult. And then you have a lot of people, we also have people, you know, like in that are on scooters that are trying to come up and down, the cars try to stop. I mean, this is a very dense, it's very dense difficult. neighborhood. It's very dense. This is a very dense neighborhood. It's very similar to where my neighborhood is. I live in East Boston. And I think that you know that there should be neighborhood conversations about where these bike lanes go. I don't think the North End even needs them because they're. I mean, it's just it's a single car road and has shadows on them. And you can still get around through here. Um, but I live in East. I live in East Boston. Um, my name is Brian Gannon. Uh, the reason I'm running, the, one of the big reasons that got me out in the first place was development, city development. I think we need to be very cautious of how we develop our city, because when they put things here, just like when they put the central artery, um, you know, anytime they make a decision where they're doing a huge development, it matter. It, it's permanent. It's here for a long time, and sometimes you make mistakes, and it takes many years to go backwards. This really started out with the casino where um, my opponent was trying to open the casino. That he's working, um, you know, alongside with some of Suffolk Downs, and they they want to see a casino in East Boston. I think it's a terrible idea for our city in East Boston. I also think it's a terrible idea for Everett. Um, I have I'm working on a statewide repeal so we can keep it out of Massachusetts completely. I think it's a terrible idea for Massachusetts. I think. It's okay to go to casinos. I've gone to casinos. I know there's a sign here for people to go to Foxwood. It's a great time. You just don't want to live there. And I think what's going to happen is it will pull a lot of the money and draw a lot of the resources off the streets that are spending money in our small businesses. So when people have a little bit of extra cash to spend at a restaurant, they may lose that at the casino instead. They may, you know, I know that it, the North End felt a little bit of impact from the Seaport District. The casino is going to have 15 restaurants. 6,000 slot machines, it's definitely going to have an impact on our city. So that got me into this, but aside from that, my wife and I live in East Boston and Jeffrey's Point. We want a, we want a, uh, you know, a safe, safe city. We want to raise our kids here. We want great schools. We want great parks. Hopefully a few bike lanes, not in the North End. But you know, we're looking for, we think the city's really in a great, great place. And, and Menino's left us in a really fantastic place as well as a lot of the work that Sal's done in our city. And I think you know, we're, it's now time to take the next step and keep moving forward and, you know, in this direction. I think there's a lot of things we can do here. So, um, But I really appreciate your vote on November 5th. I won my first primary, my first preliminary election, was able to come through, and now I get to go on to the 5th. I'm new to politics. I'm not a politician. I'm just a neighbor and a concerned citizen. Like a lot of you in this room, I was very vocal about some of the things happening in my neighborhood. And, decided I was going to do something about it. So please consider me, and you'll see me a lot around the neighborhood. I know you've seen me a lot already, so I uh, look forward to some more. Uh,